Welcome back to the Outdoor Adventure Expo from Midwest Mountaineering this spring. Um, I am here to introduce Gary Scott, who is going to be talking us through exploring Croatia, Slovenia, and Slovakia. Um, and throughout this presentation, um, Gary is going to be talking about all sorts of different things about how to explore these countries. Um, and you guys are welcome to ask questions through the chat uh, that on OutdoorAdventureExpo.com. If you have questions about your trip planning or things to explore or places that he recommends visiting. As you ask those questions, I will be able to relay those to Gary and he can answer them throughout his presentation. Um, yeah, if you, yeah, please, please feel free to ask those questions. I'm going to pass this off to Gary. He is going to start his presentation. Great, thank you so much. Can you hear me okay? Yep, you sound good. Terrific. Well, hi everyone from uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. I've been here a couple of months. Uh, before that, I was in uh, Slovakia with my wife uh, when uh, winter hit and things started locking down. So I escaped to uh, Salt Lake where I I uh, have some things I needed to take care of. And before that, I was in Australia for six months, um, <clears throat> which is not a bad place to spend uh, some time uh, during COVID. But uh, yeah, just a little bit about my background for those that you don't know. Um, I grew up in rather a flat area of Australia. Uh, my father was a diplomat and uh, in the army and we traveled around the world. We came to the US when I was six and we were up in... Um, uh, Banff, Lake Louise, and paddling out on Lake Louise. And I looked up in the mountains and asked my father a couple of questions and turned to him and said, I'm going to be a mountain climber. So uh, my path was chosen. And uh, so since then, I, I've done uh, a lot of climbing around the world, a lot of mountaineering, uh, worked as an ice climbing guide um, in New Hampshire, a mountaineering guide in California, uh, guided a lot of the seven summits, um, two trips on Everest, 40 treks in Nepal. And then I started, uh, you know, uh, going to Europe about uh, 10 years ago and based myself in the Dolomites, which I'm going to talk about more tomorrow at um, two o'clock Wednesday, Dolomites of Northern Italy. And then I started exploring uh, Croatia and Slovenia. So I spend uh, now six months a year, except for last year, uh, in these countries and uh, just have fallen in love and just really missed Croatia this year. Yeah. And uh, in the background, you can see a photo of the beautiful, beautiful Dolomites, um, area called the Val de Funes. And so I feel very, very fortunate that I get to spend my summers hanging out and hiking with people on beautiful trails, having adventures eating great food, drinking some great wine, and um, just, uh, you know, exploring these amazing places. Um, so right now, my, my company name is called Right Path Adventures. Hey, I'm a guide. I'm trying to keep you on the right path. And um, uh, I try and find the right path for you. Uh, and um, so right now, I offer, uh, like, basically week-long, sometimes eight or nine-day trips, um, walking trips in Croatia, Slovenia, and Slovakia, and I do a combined Croatia and Slovenia. I call it an active walking trip because every day we're doing some walking, but we're doing a bunch of other active fun things um, that people can choose to participate in or not. But um, we go to really great places, um, only places that I love, um, stay in super cool, unique places. And this year um, <clears throat> I'm heading back August, Sixth, uh, my first trip is August 16th to Slovakia. I have a few spots left on a couple of trips, but not many. I'm pretty much booked out. I get a lot of repeat uh, customers, um, uh, which is a real compliment. And um, people send me an email, call me up and say, where are you going next? And they hardly ask for an itinerary, which is kind of fun. They trust that I'll take um, good care of them. But uh, I do have some pictures to show you of all these places. And I plan to start talking about Croatia, then Slovenia, then Slovakia. And if I have a little time left, I'll, I'll touch on the Dolomites. I'm also excited about going back to Nepal this year in November. I've got a couple of what I call comfort treks there, seven-day treks to 
look and see Mount Everest without um, suffering in the cold and the altitude and the, um, um, the very busy uh, trails. So um, yeah, I mean, Croatia and Slovenia and Slovakia, which I've just started going to, I, my wife is from Slovakia, um, are cool countries in that, you know, pretty much everyone's gone to France and Germany and Italy. And I love Northern Italy um, where the Dolomites are, but Croatia and, um, and these other places just have a kind of a sense of adventure and there's fewer uh, Westerners, Western American tourists there and they still sort of just have that cool feel about them uh, that makes it a lot of fun and they're not overrun by tourists. Some of the other places in Europe are just ridiculous um, how many people there and they just can ruin the experience quite frankly. Uh, and so um, uh, I've found, I've spent years exploring these places finding the cool off the beaten track places um, and cool hotels great restaurants so that we can stay away from the uh, the hordes and uh, have a, a more intimate experience so I got some pictures I want to show you so um, we'll uh, swap over to that um, and let me see can my great moderator here can let me know when that's come up all good gary great so there's my logo and uh, my company name right path adventures and um yeah i married um katarina in new zealand two years ago we had a two and a half month money honeymoon there and uh just um yeah it's a great country and i'm also doing private road trips to Australia and New Zealand now, which is great. But uh, Katerina um, speaks about eight languages, comes on a lot of trips with me now, and people just adore her and hanging out with her. And so she loves to hike. And, um, you know, she obviously speaks Slovakian very well. And so she comes on uh, those trips with us as well. And people really enjoy her. So this is just a rough map. You can see here we've got uh, Venice and um, let's see where my if my mouse is coming up doesn't look like it um, but you can see Venice there Trieste to the right so we start our a lot of our Croatia trips in Trieste which is only like a hour and a half two hour um, uh, train ride uh, from Venice so Venice is worth a few days if you haven't uh, spent time there um, and as you look up the very top left corner, Bolzano, Bozen, they use both the, uh, the Deutsch, German and Italian names in that area, which makes it confusing. And so that's where we start our Dolomites trips and basically head across to, um, uh, towards Villaggio, but not, uh, not going that far. And um, Croatia is only a couple hours away from um, uh, Venice and Italy. So it's really accessible. And I try and you know, plan trips that have the least amount of time in the van and uh, more time for experiences. And this top area, you can see above the right, right where the Google uh, name is, you know, that peninsula is called the Istra or Istria, depending if you use the Italian or the Croatian peninsula. And to me, that area just really packs a punch. And I'm going to show you photos from Ravin, Pula, Opadia, uh, and um, my Croatia walking trip starts in Treste and heads south to Split, doing some fabulous walks along the way. And then, and that's a great area for a road trip. I've probably driven that coast, you know, 10 times and it's just really quite fun. Um, and then um, I do a back to back, um, <clears throat> you know, I come back up uh, from the south to the north. And I do a loop um, from Trieste down Ravin, Pula, Padia into Slovenia, uh, which I'm going to take you on. Um, and then Slovakia is northwest of here, not uh, in this photo. But on these trips, you know, you can travel pretty light. These gals were traveling for three weeks. They had uh, formal functions they had to go to and um, everything in between, hiking trip and so, you know, you can get away with traveling pretty light just to carry on in a backpack. And, you know, um, I send out a recommended gear list uh, 
uh, recommended clothing list before you go. This is uh, one of my vans uh, that I've had over the years. Sometimes I lease them, um, nine seater, very comfortable. And this year with COVID, we're taking uh, fewer people in the van, staying at even more fam smaller family run um, hotels and just uh, generally sticking away from people. But I just heard this morning, uh, New York Times, that um, the EU um, you know, promises that uh, Europe will be open for travelers from the US uh, this summer. So that's very exciting. My last trip was at the end of the summer 2019. So it's what I love to do, what I'm passionate about doing. And I just can't wait to get back and show people these super cool places. Um, and go on some great uh, walks and hikes with them. So um, <clears throat> this is uh, Croatia. This is a, a fun uh, small group um, that, uh, and we're visiting a hill town uh, for uh, strategic defense in, um, in this area. The, uh, in Croatia, people would congregate on the top of a hill and this was a walled city called Modovan, uh, which is cool to spend the night at. Um, and interestingly enough, um, the racing car driver, um, and wouldn't you know, it's going to go out of Mario Andretti uh, was born here, and he used to race his go karts with his brother down the windy uh, cobblestone streets, uh, which was um, uh, quite exciting, I'm sure. But it's a three thousand year old town, lot of history. So we do a walk through the town and stay right on top, and you can see the the top of the bell tower there give an incredible view and just the sunset and the sunrise from there are just fabulous um yeah so here you can see the wall we do a walk around the wall and stay right up there right and uh, eat um you know with a view right over the um <clears throat> right over the valley it's pretty pretty incredible and it's being raided by many different hordes and tribes and empires and never taken which is cool you can see this um it's pretty artsy there's a little town nearby to another hill station that uh hill town that we go to Grzynian. uh some of the names are difficult to pronounce um and as you can see the half of a chair sticking out of the uh the wall there so kind of an artsy community so we'll take a walk through there and um so I get groups of uh, friends. Um, I get uh, groups of uh, uh, couples that are all friends or, or girlfriends and uh, a lot of people celebrating birthdays and um, people can arrive and just know that they're gonna be well taken care of. Uh, the hotels are gonna be fabulous. The food's gonna be fabulous and they're gonna do something fabulous every day because if it wasn't fabulous, I wouldn't do it. And so, yeah, this is the view looking down from Motivan, fascinating. Um, I'm a history buff. And so I try and, uh, you know, uh, try not to bore people, but talk about the history of a place and why we go to places. And, you know, this is fascinating. The, the logs from that built the foundations from Venice were found in a forest up uh, in the distance in Slovenia. And they dredged out this uh, river called the Myrna and they would cut the trees down, bring them down to the river and drag them along with um, uh, horses and out to the um, Adriatic and uh, a port. And then they would take them in ships across to Venice. So uh, pretty fascinating. Um, big truffle area. And um, so we get to do some truffle tasting, learn about truffles. Croatia just won the top award for olive oil in the world so we'll um, we'll do some olive oil tasting and we even go truffle hunting uh, which is kind of fun and we've been lucky most times and this is our uh, Goran our uh, trusty uh, uh, truffle hunting guru and they use dogs for truffle hunting in Croatia and in France they use pigs so it's a fun experience. And yep, there we go. We found some. And uh, of course, we have to reward the dogs. Um, and they're trained at a young age. They actually put um, truffle oil on their mother's teats. And um, uh, so that's kind of fascinating uh, to get them used to it. So then we head around the coast. Um, and uh, there's another place we stopped before this, but 
Um, this is Opadia and the, the famous woman with the seagull, Angelina. And it's a beautiful Austrian-Hungarian resort town with a fabulous walk along the coastline there, 14 kilometers that we do um, in the morning and in the evening and stay at a historic uh, hotel right on the... Um, the boardwalk there in this great restaurants and just it's got a, a really cool vibe and uh, I often send people off for dinner at a special place this is a big group from Hawaii they'd trekked in uh, the Dolomites with me and came back with more friends um, that happens quite often to um, uh, to Croatia and Slovenia this is the view from my hotel room so I pick uh, rooms in hotels that have fabulous views and are in fabulous locations and uh, the coastal walk is just down where those lights are, so it stops uh, there. So um, we've had some fabulous sunsets and moon rises from here. So um, everything is for a reason. So um, we'll see if this, um, oh, let me see if I can um, uh, play this video. It might not be on full screen, but. So you might've heard of uh, Plitvica. Uh, Plitvica uh, National Park. It's a um, uh, beautiful place, um, but it can get very, very crowded. But it's these amazing waterfalls and lakes and colors and turquoise lakes. And so I, I did a lot of exploring and inquiring, and I found a lodge in the back where there's uh, very few people come in. So we often sneak in in the morning. Oh, there it goes. Uh, you get. Um, deja vu here <clears throat> but we're usually first on the trail in the mornings and um, we usually do an evening hike when the park is theoretically closed and uh, this is a group I think they've been on three trips with me coming back to Slovakia this fall wonderful people from uh, Chicago and this is uh, one of the lodges we stay at which is um, you know just a lot of fun and great food, great people. And going back there every six months, you know, I've just had these great relationships with the lodge owners and the waitresses and the cooks. And so we really, uh, my guests get to feel like, um, um, you know, they're part of the family and we get very special treatment and special rooms. So it's a, a really fun experience. And that's when people often ask, why go with the guide? Well, there's a lot of reasons that you're gonna get a more special uh, trip um, with a guide. So this is my group first on the trail. Um, and I found the way to uh, work our way through the upper and the lower lakes and avoid uh, the crowds. And we get out there out of there before um, uh, the crowds begin. So this is often how we uh, approach these trails, whereas this is what it's like at 12 o'clock. And there's places where it's worse. So um, yeah, you can have this with a guide or you can have this on your own. You decide. <clears throat> so another town that we stop at is Pula, which is just fascinating. And a lot of people don't go there. Um, but um, and they often have because it's a, an old Roman town, 3000 years of history. It's been owned or controlled by nine different empires and countries from Germany to the Austrian-Hungarian Empire to Italy to the Ottoman Empire. Fascinating history. And so, and this is the temple here, um, 2000 years old. And often they'll have a, 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 a celebration of the Romans. And um, so we happened to stumble upon one one day, which was kind of fun. Well, actually I knew it was happening. So that's why we went. And they have an arena there. Most people don't realize that in Croatia, they have one of the six remaining um, arenas <clears throat> in the world. This has one of the best preserved areas underneath where the gladiators got um, changed. And um, I actually saw Deep Purple play here once, which was pretty awesome. And there's John, bottom left. And John's coming on his fifth trip with me this year. So we have a lot of fun. This is a group that came to the Dolomites with me and then came back to Croatia and Slovenia. So just a little uh, lunch spot where we're trying some of the fabulous seafood and calamari um, and uh, their famous uh, cold soup. 
and uh yeah so in the background we'll often do a coastal walk so every day we're walking we're doing a city tour this is another area Kamenyak, where we're doing a walk and some people went for a swim uh later on uh the adriatic's very very clean beautiful uh spot and there's um we've taken out boats for sunset uh cruises and dolphin cruises and um and this is another town that I love. Gosh, should I tell you the name of it? Hmm. Maybe you have to email me. But it's one of the gems of the Adriatic. And um, very few people go there. It's just beautiful cobbled streets. Um, fantastic. One of the coolest towns in the world, I would uh, uh, gamble to say. And uh, people love it. Uh, very bohemian. Lots of great restaurants. Great views. Great vibe. Art shopping um just a really cool place great park there you can go for a bike ride along these guys went to the dolomites with me came back to croatia and slovenia it's got a cool old town we used to do a guided walk with an expert uh, local guide uh, have some fabulous dinners and there's a fabulous park that you can walk along forever um so yeah people get the choice of doing a bike ride or a hike or both and this is one of my favorite little uh, tiki bars uh, along the way that we stop at and just great swimming there and well protected and oh, fabulous. Uh, people could swim right out of the town, take a boat over to the island, um, Katerina Island, um, named after my wife, of course. And uh, we often go out in um, uh, Elmo, uh, the boat there and see the sunset cruise um, we used to go out on the pirate ship to the right but that just got too crazy they just drink a lot so we go out for the sunset and see the uh, um, uh, dolphins and then come back for a fabulous dinner or people can go for a swim this is another group um uh yeah went to the dolomites came back to croatia and slovenia and they just recently built this fabulous hotel so we're just having a drink before i set them up with a chef's table dinner they were uh, foodies uh really into their food so we set that up for them and they had a fabulous time and uh, as you can see the view from there is awesome so as i said i get to know the waitresses and we get special tables and special treatment and special food and freebies from the chefs and so it's just great to be you know go back to these places and be well taken care of and have friends um Ronka actually went on a sailing trip i did a month sailing in croatia and she was our hostess so we uh, developed a great relationship and um, she now works at one of the top uh, restaurants which is very hard to get in unless you know people so from there we're going to head to um um gosh i talked for 25 20 minutes on um Croatia. So um, Slovenia, <clears throat> wonderful, wonderful country, great vibe, great people, voted Lonely Planet best in travel, the Julian Alps, named after Julius Caesar in 2018. And um, the award went to Slovakia in 2019. How about that? But um, Ljubljana, um, very few people have heard of it. To me, it's one of the coolest quaintest most fun most interesting um small cities in europe i just love it i'm not a big city guy i could spend a month here we do there's a lot of art a lot of architecture great vibe the mayor was very smart 10 years ago he stopped people driving into the city so the old town where we stay is all pedestrians it's very tranquil um, and the Slovenian people are just very nice. They're big into the outdoors, big into fitness, love the mountains, which are only an hour away. And uh, so we spent a couple of nights in Ljubljana, do a guided um, city tour with an expert. Um, there's great uh, restaurants, bars, shopping. Um, you can um, uh, go on a boat ride down the, the river. This is our, uh, uh, this is Zagon, our um uh, guide talking about uh, this beautiful door behind him and so um, he's with us for a couple of hours just a great experience to learn about the town and look at this this is the main street and look there's just nobody on it so uh, we're at a fabulous top rated restaurant um, and unlike Paris or Venice or Milan or other places 
which would be just teeming with people, Barcelona, you name it. Um, we've got this place to ourselves. So pretty darn nice. So there's castles. We have a castle and a cave day where we go through these UNESCO caves. You won't get claustrophobic, guided walking tour. And then we walk through the cave, uh, the castle, get a tour. Uh, people can listen on headsets if they want. It's just a unique experience built into the side of a cliff. Uh, there was hordes that, you know, raided it and didn't understand they had a tunnel out the back to get supplies and they would throw them down chickens to, um, you know, taunt them. Um, so, um, yeah, the guys on the left, they're coming back on, uh, it's my, on my Nepal trip. Uh, and uh, they've been on two trips. They went to the Dolomites then Croatia and Slovenia. Sounds like a routine. So this is um, one of the, the cave systems, which is just fabulous. You, we walk through it. So um, every day, as I said, um, you know, we're just uh, having an adventure, doing different things. People have called it the, the Gary's uh, Magical Mystery Tour because um, I don't divulge too much and just keep a lot of secret. So we stay in fabulous hotels, um, you know, otherwise we wouldn't stay at them. I want everyone to be happy. Usually four star, um, great service, impeccably clean, attached bathrooms, of course, and uh, either great locations, great views or some redeeming uh, factor. This is Bled, Lake Bled with the uh, beautiful chapel on the island. And you can see the stairs there on the left. So uh, often wedding parties go out there and to deem if a spouse, the groom is worthy, he has to carry his wife up the 119 stairs and then still have the energy to ring the bell three times for good luck. So we either paddle out there on our own or take one of these boats. And it is one of the most popular areas uh, for tourists in uh, Slovenia, but um, well worth it. We do some hikes in the area. Um, this is uh, another lake nearby, which um, uh, I like better, just fewer people, beautiful hiking, beautiful, um, you know, as you can see, just serene. Uh, there's great stand up paddle boarding. Um, you can parasail, tandem, tandem, tandem parasail there, um, bike, hike, swim, canoe, um, it's got it all. It's a fabulous place. Rafting, so um, hike to a waterfall, um, it's, and then hiking up to see the Julian Alps, beautiful Julian Alps in the background. So we pack a lot in in a day and always have time for a little uh, refreshments in the evening and hopefully to watch uh, the sunset. Um, always having fun. This is John uh, below the, um, uh, this is Triglav Peak. It's got three heads to it. It's the tallest peak in Slovenia. And as they say, you aren't a true Slovenian until you've climbed it. And it is got a technical kind of steep section to it. I've never done it. Um, I don't really climb anymore or do anything that uh, scary or dangerous, but um, a lot of school groups do it. They stay in a hut overnight and then hike along this knife edge ridge. So you talk to any waitress, any person in Slovenia, and they'll probably say, yeah, we've done it two or three times. But we just do a hike up the valley. John's coming back to Slovakia this year. So we're excited about that. Always fun. And he's a history buff. So anyone can on any trip can just ask him any question and he knows the answer. It's awesome. But um, uh, there's tremendous mountaineering in uh, Slovenia and some of the best. A very good friend of mine, uh, unfortunately, he passed away on Annapurna. Um, Thomas Humer was from uh, Slovenia. And the, these incredible mountains are only you know, an hour's drive from the capital city. So we'll do a fabulous hike there. Um, <clears throat> here it is. And then back, you can see a dot in the middle of the photo down below. And, you know, people hike at their own pace. And um, I always have hiking poles for everyone. If somebody wants to turn down early, they turn around early, they can. And um, we've stayed here some nights, but usually now we just have lunch and um, I know the owners, so we get, once again, just a little special treatment and uh, fun to have. A, and I think that day, you know, we had the fire burning inside and we learned the history of it and uh, just a fun experience. So we'll see if we can get this to work. This is to get out of the mountains. We take the car train through the mountains, which saves us about an hour travel. Uh, so you drive the van on top of it. Unique experience. 
uh, do a gorge hike on the other side. Um, fabulous um, uh, color of the water there. Um, <clears throat> interesting history. This area was part of the front lines of the First World War. I've studied a lot on the First World War, so I talk about that. And we even stop at a, a World War I uh, museum, um, have lunch at Kabarid, where Sir, uh, not Sir, but uh, um, Hemingway, Ernest Hemingway was based. Uh, later, he wrote his book. Um, um, oh, gosh. Help me. Um, not for whom the bells toll, but um, I forget. But he wrote a book on um, the First World War. <laughs> so somebody probably knows. Anyway, from there, we head into the winery area and actually stay at a very cool winery, climb up this 200 foot tower, which sways in the wind. That's why uh, Deanne, who's been on two trips with me, is hugging her friend. It's a little scary up there, but just you can look and see the Adriatic from here and it sticks out into Italy. It's I think it rivals um, uh, uh, Tuscany. It's just gorgeous. We walk around this little town of Smartno exploring and try some wine and uh, then I found this just gem of a place uh, where we um, spend the night it, for, it for me it's like going home I just love it there's my one of my vans there and uh, we sleep here we get a winery tour um, we eat here and nobody wants to leave it's just so personable so this is the sun giving us a tour of um, we taste the wine right out of the barrels it's seventh generation biodynamic so beyond organic winery swimming pool there if people want to swim and just a very fun romantic place um, watching the sunset listening to the birds trying the different wines and we can help in the kitchen we do cooking lessons there um, that's Anushka on the right she's just like a second mother to me she's just wonderful so we love staying here I'm really helping in the kitchen and um so we, I, I, that all is a nine day Croatia, Slovenia trip. We pack all that in. We've met other people on the way and they've gone, oh my God, you know, you did that today, you know, and they take three days to do that. So now we're going to go to Slov Slovakia. Sorry, not Slovenia. My wife always gets upset with me. I, I, we were together for a year before it hit me that um, she was from Czechoslovakia. 20 odd years ago, they had what's called the Velvet Divorce and the Czech Republic, as you can see up to the far left, um, they split. And so they're now separate republics, but they consider each other brother and sister. You can see Hungary below, Poland up above, uh, Slovenia is down to the bottom left and um, Austria, you can see Bratislava there uh, on the left, the capital an hour from there is Vienna. So often people will fly into Vienna get a, a, a van or a bus over to Bratislava, spend the night there. Um, and then we pick them up and we go over into um, the low and the high Tatras uh, for a week, eight days of um, hiking. So where the S is, is in Slovakia is where um, Katerina and I have an apartment. We bought half an acre of land right near a 14th century castle so we've often had people we take for a barbecue at our place and then they stay at the castle um so the high tatras you know fascinating area not uh, overly developed um and um you know uh lonely planet doesn't give out their um uh, uh designations um easily and they won the best in Europe, number one destination for the high Tatras of Slovakia, which is very cool. So Slovakia has got a lot of amazing history, um, castles, um, some great food, some fascinating people you'll meet. Um, and we just uh, basically we're going to be doing hikes every day. The trip's focused on hiking, kind of like the Dolomites. Uh, this is one of. Uh, ancient 5,000 year old settlement above the town of Zvolen near uh, where I have my property. Um, and uh, we often do a hike with a historian in that area. Uh, this is, it's got a zillion UNESCO protected places. I think I visited five in one day. Um, this is the town of Levico, which uh, often we visit. 
Um, and I talk to my groups beforehand to get a feel of what they like. And I don't do church tours, but if there's a fabulous church and people want to go in it, they can go in it. Um, <clears throat> and uh, often I'll either do a guided tour around a town or get a local uh, expert. Um, and you can see uh, uh, up on the hill there, the, uh, the church. Um, so we'll do a hike to a high point to get a great view um and explore these little towns but the castles are often fun and usually we'll get a guided tour of those and um yeah we get in a good walk and um or sometimes you know i'll save the castles for a rainy day you know essentially and so that we spend most of the days in the mountains this is my wife katarina and i in uh staying at one of the hotels on the lakes um uh, the hotel's just to the left of me and uh, yeah, those are the mountains that we've been hiking in. We just finished a, um, a morning uh, hike around the lake as the sun was coming up. So lots of opportunity to hike, do your own thing, um, time to you know relax as well. But um, wonderful hiking trails for all levels, uh, and um, yeah, just not a lot of people. You know, how many people have been to Slovakia? Not many, which is. A good thing you can see the trail marker over on the left there uh just catching the sunset from a viewpoint um just a cool experience great food great people <clears throat> you know we'll have lunch at some uh of the mountain lodges and um just uh yeah some of the relationships i'm developing there i'm picking up a little slovakian um, my wife speaks or understands like nine languages so she's uh, great to have along but we'll eat well, and uh, uh, often there's a lot of healthy choices, but of course, we've got to try some of the local uh, food and local beers, local wines, local schnapps, and have a great time. So you can see a hiker there on the ridge just to the right. Um, we'll do some beautiful hikes. And uh, so there's the low Tatras, there's the high Tatras, uh, and um, <clears throat> yeah, just have a great time. This is... Uh, we can get a cable car up to here or a hike up. And then there's a cable car to the top of the mountain, which is the highest point in Slovakia. Um, pretty exciting um, cable car ride. You just stand in this, uh, this little sort of coffin uh, to Nomliki Stit at uh, 2,600 meters. So not really high. So uh, Dolomites, Slovenia, Slovakia, Croatia, never have to really worry about altitude because we don't really just go that high. But fabulous views from there. Um, and we didn't do a hike from there, pretty technical right from there. And you can see the, the pack with the helmet. There is the Via Ferrata where you can clip in, but um, yeah, we didn't do that. But <clears throat> fabulous views uh, and just hiking for all levels. Um, in the background, that's actually Dolomite Rock, the brown. So we do a hike along the ridge there uh, for a day hike and start very near Poland. Um, and people often finish the trip in uh, the town of Popred, or we can, um, you know, get them transported over to um, Warsaw or Krakow if they want to uh, go to the, all those areas. And, you know, Slovakia is very central, actually, where we live. If you put a compass point in, it is the center of Europe. Most people think of it as Eastern Europe, and it sort of feels like that, but it's actually kind of more um, Central Europe. So um, I do have places on my August 16th Slovakia trip, if people are interested, and a couple of places on a trip in um, October. So feel free to email me. And obviously next year, I'm going to have a full schedule and... Um, uh, I dropped all my prices by $1,000, so it's a great deal this year just to encourage people to get out there and uh, travel again. And, you know, um, you know, I just love uh, being with people on the trails and miss that and can't wait to get uh, back out there. So, um, yeah, we've got a little bit of time. Do we have any questions that have come in? Um, I haven't seen any questions come in yet, Gary, but uh, there's a little bit of a lag. And so we'll just wait a minute or two to see if anyone catches up and has some questions and I'll let them let you know. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Well, while we do have time, I will, um, you know, we've been going about 40 minutes now, but that's the main part of the talk on the um, Croatia, Slovenia and Slovakia. 
I do spend the bulk of my summers in the Dolomites of um, uh, Northern Italy. So I've got a couple of pictures, so I might as well just talk about that. Um, and I do have three trips in September this year. Um, and uh, I, I went to the Dolomites 10 years ago and just fell in love with it. And after the Dolomites, I'm, um, I've got a couple of Slovakia trips. And then I go to Nepal, where I've got this seven-day uh, comfort trek, um, uh, where we stay in fabulous lodges, eat great food, and don't have to worry about altitude and cold and acclimatization. So you can check out my website if you're interested in that. Um, you can always email me at gary at Right Path Adventures. And I'd have to be happy to chat with you over the phone. My phone number's on the website as well. But yeah, I went to the Dolomites and I just fell in love with it. It's got a tremendous combination of, um, you know, culture, history, um, tradition. It's a Disneyland for hikers, over 10,000 kilometers of hiking trails, cable car system that you can utilize to get up to the better views, incredible hotels, gourmet food. Um, it really is fabulous. So I've taken over 100 groups there. This is in the spring, um, still at a, a, a little icing of snow, which gives some uh, dramatic effect there. And uh, yeah, the two couples on the left, they're actually coming back to um, go to Nepal with me in, um, yeah, next year, next April. So this is a typical Dolomites view. Um, it looks like we do have a couple questions coming in. Okay. So yeah. the first is, uh, do you go to Montenegro or Dubrovnik, if I'm saying that correctly? Yes. Okay. Let me answer that answer question that first. Yep. <laughs> My memory is not too long. <clears throat> I have been to Montenegro. I've been twice. I didn't really like it. And... The pictures are fabulous, but, and it's funny, I, I used to spend a lot of time in Hawaii and I was on a beautiful beach in Hawaii talking with a friend and he said, you know, I've heard Montenegro is beautiful. And I said, dude, you live in one of the most beautiful places in the world. Certainly don't fly all the way around the world to go to Montenegro. So the pictures look great and countries, you know, they, they want you to go there. They're good at marketing, but I'm just being honest. I didn't like the feel of it. Um, and I went to, I went, I was going to be there for 10 days. I've gone there twice. Uh, the first time I left after four days, the second time I spent a week there. Um, and um, I just, I just didn't, couldn't get into it. Um, I was wanting to take people there because it was out of the EU and, um, uh, so the pictures of the beaches you see when you get down to the beaches, there's a lot of construction, a lot of half-built construction. A lot of the popular towns have um, construction going on and dust and um, jackhammers. There's a lot of unfinished buildings. The beaches you wouldn't want to go swimming in, um, I'd say. <clears throat> sure, go across there, but uh, you know we went there um actually i've been there three times when the border crossing was horrendous took quite a few hours uh we stayed on an island that was very expensive um just to me it was a little you know even more uh rustic than croatia and i, I think you're far better off spending more time in um croatia um and or slovenia um Anyway, that's just my personal opinion. I've been to Dubrovnik a number of times on my Croatia walking tour. We stop at Split, and from there, people can get a, a bus or a van down to Dubrovnik. Um, I, I rarely do cities with my groups, um, simply because they can do them on their own. Um, I liked Dubrovnik. I found other places I love a lot more, and Dubrovnik's and I actually did a talk uh, at uh, Midwest Mountaineering a couple of years ago. There was 100 people in the audience. I said, how many people have heard of Dubrovnik? 100 hands went up. I said, how many people have heard of Rovin? No hands went up. That's where I take people. So uh, it's where the cruise ships stop. And so it's become very inauthentic. Uh, the, the people, the restaurant owners, the hotels, the, the, the shops cater to that 
uh, few hour mentality. So I, you know, uh, the wall, the walk around the walls, great. The cable car up um, uh, behind the town's great. And I know lots of people that have had a great time in Montenegro and a great time in Dubrovnik. Um, but you can have a great time anywhere if you're with the right people in the right situation, doing the right thing. I just, I've got to be excited about a place and feel really passionate about it if I'm going to take people there. And <clears throat> um, so, yeah, on my crow walking tour, you know, from Trieste or Pula, people can fly down to Dubrovnik, spend a couple of days there and see it. And it is cool, you know, Game of Thrones and all that. It's a, it's a cool place, but no, I, I don't take people there. All right, our next question is, what is a typical day for distance? I'm gonna assume they're talking about hiking distance. And maybe an add on to that would be how are you kind of making it accessible for people of all different hiking abilities? I know you sp spoke about that a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, great question. <clears throat> um, I've been, a, you know, I've been hiking since I was eight um, bushwalking in Australia. I've been a trekking guide for 35 years done other, over 250 international trips. And probably like many of you, you're very good at your jobs, but it would be perhaps difficult to explain why. I named my business Right Path to Ventures because I'm very good at keeping people on the right path. I'm also very, very good at um, finding the right path for individuals. And in a group of six, eight, I'm just very good. And it's hard to explain how, but um, I can quickly evaluate people's hiking abilities. And um, I'm often getting people to slow down, to enjoy the views. And often people, you know, they'll train for a trip, they'll get in great shape, and they want to do it as quickly as possible. And really, why would you rush this view in the background? So I'm often getting people to slow down, smell the roses, and just walk at a slower, more comfortable pace. So I rarely get people, and there's always, there's always going to be a slower and a faster person, always. But I'm not the kind of person that has to have everybody walk behind me in alphabetical order. I often let people that I, am, that I learn or I can see are competent and not going to fall off the trail and fitter go on ahead. And often, you know, I'll take people on a side hike. I've often hired many times my wife comes with me. She brings up the rear. Um, and um, sometimes I'll hire a local guide. Uh, but generally, you know, I, I've just, you know, 100 trips in the Dolomites. I, I just know how to cater to people and to make sure everyone's happy. And sometimes we'll get to a spot and I'll say, okay, from here, we can walk up the ridge. You can turn back whenever you want. Those that want to keep going with me, um, faster walkers, we'll just come back and we'll join you for a cappuccino or the second course of lunch. Um, so it always works out. I've had people that I've given a map and I've said, okay, you hike up here, hike over there and I'll pick you up, or we're going to go this way. We'll meet you there. Um, when the question was about a typical day, there's no typical day with me. There's no typical day because every day is different. We do day hikes. I vary. I'll often wake up in the morning, grab a cup of coffee, look outside, think about the group and think, okay, yeah, I'm going to take them here either because, and that's why I don't like to, you know, send out detailed itineraries. Why say you're going to go to the Hoots and Sputs on Wednesday when it might be cloudy and rainy there and it's better to go to the Langenthal Valley? So I like to take, stay loose and flexible, but I'm very, very, very good at finding the right trails for people. At the end of the day, um, you know, when we get back into the villages or the hotels by mid afternoon. I do have some groups that want to hike longer and we do that, but we get back and I say, okay, who wants to go for a longer or I can suggest a, a, a further hike. Often there's a point in a day where, so let's just say a typical day is eight to 12 miles, probably typical 
10 miles, some days are shorter, some days are longer. I have rarely in a hundred groups had somebody that couldn't do it. Um, and um, I've always, I, I've had people with two hip replacements. I've had people who didn't train. I've had people that were on the heavier side. I have people that have, you know, never been on a walking trip before. Croatia and Slovenia, that combined, and the walking in Croatia is pretty moderate. Um, and, you know, because in Croatia and Slovenia and Slovakia, we're, we're doing day hikes, but sometimes we're moving between places. You know, we're doing a three quarter day hike and then we're driving to the next town, the next lodge. So the, the days are shorter. And so Croatia and Slovenia, that's why I call it an active walking adventure because we walk less. But um, if someone wants to talk to me further about that, I'm happy to, but yeah, it's, um, you know, a couple of years ago, I won uh, an award for walking tour company in Italy. Um, and so, yeah, you know, I just know how to take people on the right hikes um, and um, show them a good time. And I rarely have, uh, and so this, this is a map of the Dolomites. And so we can take a cable car up, the black or cable car, it doesn't even show all the chairlifts, all these red are trails. So I have infinite varieties of trails to take people on. So we can get to a point, we can go left, we can go right, we can go straight, we can go steep. We use cable cars to get up onto the plateaus. Um, if somebody's worried that they're not gonna be fit enough, it's not a concern. If somebody's worried they're not gonna get enough walking in, it's not a concern. I've had mountain runners and mountain goats and um, being able to you know, uh, challenge them. And I've even had somebody that said, uh, I wanna be challenged and they regretted that. So, um, um, but if somebody has specific questions about that, um, you know, they can give me a call back, but I get, you know, I showed you uh, photos of groups that just come back time after time after time, because they know we're gonna, you know, do some great walking, um, not going to be death marches. They're not going to be dead at the end of the day. And um, they're just going to be, um, you know, there you are, um, you know, happy um, with the trails that I pick. So I hope that answers your question a little long winded, but there's no typical with me, um, but you'll be able to handle it. You'll get enough hiking in and um, uh, there's always more to do. Great, thank you so much, Gary. It looks like that's all the questions that we got. Um, Terrific. Is there well, anything thank else? You. No, just thank you so much. Thank you, Midwest Mountaineering. Um, I miss being there this year and hopefully I can come in the future. And um, just uh, for anyone listening or watches this in the future, please feel free to send me an email and contact me. I love to talk about travel and hopefully I can take you on a fabulous uh, adventure sometime in the future. Awesome. Thank you again so much, Gary. And uh, thank you to everyone who watched this presentation. I will be posting the link to Gary's website for Right Path Adventures. And um, you can also go back and view the recording of this presentation at any point or any others on the YouTube page from Midwest Mountaineering, which I will also post a link to in the chat. Thank um, you. Thanks again. Bye, Bye Gary. Bye.